Thank you for downloading the Flixsters podcast. On this week's episode... There's a message in this movie for the people of 2021, even though it's talking about incident, like real life incidents uh, that happened in the 60s. Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, so f- reportedly she's supposed to be in the new Fantastic Four. I mean, that's big news. I mean, look at look at the way she looks and you're just thinking straight away, Sue Storm. You know? This documentary, is, like Deval said, it's kind of like a four-parter. It goes through the history of this hotel. And man, one thing that surprised me was this hi- this hotel has got had a history of like death. Compete, yes. But then, you know, I think anyone can compete with anyone. If you put me in a race with Usain Bolt at his, at his best, yeah, I'd be in the competition i'll be like way behind him but i'm technically hello and thank you for joining us for another episode of the flicksters we are really appreciative of the fact that you've taken the time to download us and um we hope you enjoy the show because on this week's episode whoa we are reviewing Man, this movie, Deval, it's just like, it's so powerful. Even just saying the name of this is just like super (laughs) powerful. But yeah, we're going to be reviewing Judas and the Black Messiah, which is this newly minted movie that's just been released on HBO Max. Uh, Deval and I, we were lucky enough to get our hands on the movie. And uh, we're going to be, you know, giving you a review of that, giving you our take on that. And if we've got time, we're going to be throwing in a hidden gem as well. So, I mean, as always, just sit back and relax and we hope you enjoy enjoy the revolution so uh, listen um before we start let's do some shout outs Devado, and um yeah take it away yeah we've got a few shout outs this week uh this week uh, quite a lot of chatter on the instagram it seems instagram actually and actually facebook instagram and facebook are the sort of main uh platforms that uh the fellow flicksters like to communicate so keep it going guys we love the chatter uh so the first shout out goes out to sifa or ziffa uh, and uh, yeah, she listens to our show. Uh, I think every, pretty much every week. Uh, she's into Marvel, and uh, she is also into Mortal Kombat. I think as well, uh, and just everything basically. But yeah, loves Marvel. Been watching uh, One Division, and she said, you know, she can't wait until sort of gets uh, towards. Well, she can wait till it gets to the end because she doesn't want it to finish. Uh, but she she listens to the Flicksters mainly to get a lot of our Marvel news. Literally, we give her a lot of the Marvel news. So. So, Sifa, uh, thank you for listening. Keep listening. Let us know what else you want to find out, and we will make sure you get everything you need. Second shout out goes out to uh, Marcy underscore. Yeah, for all the yes. way from Chile, man. All the way from Chile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Marcy gave us a, a shout out on Instagram. Uh, this was uh, this was actually in relation to this. This was a, a few. Days this was ago, our this, Malcolm and was, Marie one. That's the one, Malcolm and Marie. This was uh, just after Valentine's. And yeah. we saw that last week. A lot of love was going on in the air. And Marcy <laughs> was like, ooh, Marcy. <laughs> Probably said it. Is it Marcy or Marcy? How do no, you no, it's, 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 it's Marcy. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Yeah, gracias, uh, Marcy. Gracias. Uh, Char- Charlie Jai, U- uh, Charlie Jai uh, UK. Uh, and yeah, she listens to our show. She actually... Uh, message on Instagram and said she listens to the show. She was actually also responding to, I think, Malcolm and Marie as well, but also... (laughs) (laughs) Why are you laughing? No, I mean, it's the the picture, but also it's like the pause. (laughs) It's like his comment. Oh, uh, uh, O'Shea PD. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, O'Shea O'Shea PD. O'Shea O'Shea PD, Zeddy. The, the image that you put on Instagram of my face on uh, Zendaya and your face or your head on on uh, uh, John David Washington is an image that yeah. cannot be unseen. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that he hasn't uh, he he has sort of you know lived through that trauma and he's doing okay. But uh, he responded also to uh, that uh, you know Malcolm and Marie, as did uh, King Dot Solani, uh, Charlie Jai UK. She listened to the, the whole show recently as well and said that she loves the show. Uh, she loves the banter. The, the band, I think the, her, her favorite bit is the banter bit, uh, you know, so she loves that bit. So let's make sure we keep up the banter levels. Let's keep the banter going. Facebook shout out, <laughs> Estefania. Yes, 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 our own Estefania. Yeah, she gave us a massive shout out, actually. Yeah. Really love this shout out. So thank you very much for this one on, uh, on Facebook. 
Yes, and this one was a massive shout out to, uh, well, actually it was for uh, the actual show. And this was uh, for a promising young woman yep. uh, saying that it was a really brilliant episode, loved the laughs, uh, and uh, also talking about um, the Australian uh, Married at First Sight uh, series as well. Yep, which yep. it's starting. Which a good debate on, <laughs> yeah, it's starting there now as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. Uh, it's, it's a crazy show. Uh, uh, Kirsten also shouted out about that as well as well yeah. as Rosie on Facebook so thank you ladies we really really appreciate it. let us know what else you like and we will make sure we we, we, uh, we include it in the show so thank yeah, you exactly. very much and Deval, we got to kind of mention, we got to just give a big shout out to Ramon Alejandro as yes. well, who's yes. a new subscriber to the Flicksters. Ooh. This guy, if you go check out his page, uh, Ramon Alejandro, he's, um, yeah, he's a new listener. He's a new subscriber and he's this uh, musician. He's like big in uh, in Texas and um, yeah, man, Ooh. he's he's brilliant, man. I've been listening to some of the stuff that he's doing and uh, wow. yeah, Ramon, gracias, you know, from here all the way to Texas, we're giving you a big shout out and we you know what we hope your music career you know takes off and you're doing great things with that and we hope that you keep listening to the show and uh, yeah. yeah if there's a movie out there that you want us to review please do get in touch with us and uh, we will love to look into that for you okay so uh shout outs are all done oh, and also, remember i was gonna say actually also sorry, hope on. in texas they're doing they're doing okay because there's some the, the weather in texas is really hurting oh. a lot of people so we hope that uh, Ramon and uh, you know friends and family and everyone else in Texas uh, yeah. can actually you know uh, you know really weather the storm because it's really it, getting cold there you know exactly exactly and um, uh, talking about kind of like you know followers and subscribers I mean we've I think developed over the last like kind of month or so we've done we've worked kind of like really well you and I well you especially and um, we've kind of you know, trying to up our little game to get more subscribers. Yeah. And you know what? It's the, the little tweaks that we're doing. We're getting, you know, more subscribers and stuff. I want to see what it takes for us to get to 250. All right. So we're nearly there. We've only got four more to go. So listen, um, spread mm -hmm. the word, guys. You know, you're our yep. fixers out there as well. Spread the word for us. And um, yeah, and you know what? We'll we'll be shouting you out on the show. Okay, moving news, Devaldo. Let's kick this off. So, um <laughs> Listen, this is uh, another day in the streaming wars. So basically we've got, at the moment, we've got Netflix, we've got Amazon Prime, we've got Apple Plus, we've got uh, Hulu, yep. we've got um, Disney Plus, we've got um, HBO Max. I mean, there are loads and loads of uh, streaming players now. And you know what? You can add one more to this, Paramount Plus. So um, yeah, we're what? getting another streaming uh, you know, player. So I don't know how this is going to work with kind of like content in the UK and outside of the US, but for now, the US are getting a new streaming player called Paramount Plus and all the big Paramount movies. But yeah, man, I mean, what does this mean? Do you think that they can compete? Paramount Plus will be able to compete with the likes of Netflix and, and Apple and Disney? Well, uh, compete, yes. But then, you know, I think anyone can compete with anyone. If you put me in a race with Usain Bolt at his, <laughs> at his best. Yeah, I'll be in the competition. I'll be like way behind him, <laughs> but I'm technically in the competition because, you know, I will be there. So yeah, they will take some sub subscribers, but I think it's going to take a lot to, you know, take a big chunk out of the, uh, sure. the Netflix app, the Netflix sort of pie and the Amazon pie and the, the Disney Plus pie and, you know, but yeah, they might as well try. Yeah, yeah. Give it a go. I mean, they've got things like Star Trek Picard. <laughs> they've got, oh, I mean... That, that was on Amazon as well, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Outside, yeah, okay, well, there you go then. Outside of the US, that that's on Amazon. But I think for the US, um, for you, kind of North American uh, oh, okay. listeners out there, yeah. it's, yeah, it's definitely like something like Picard is going to kind of like be on there. But you, we'll have to wait and see. It's just interesting the fact that Paramount is... You know, they want to kind of join the whole streaming thing and we'll see what happens with that one. All right, let's move on to this next news. Now, Devaldo, have you seen Bridgerton? I'm hearing a lot of stuff about this Bridgerton. I don't know what it is. I know it's kind of like some rom romance, romantic TV show on um, on Netflix. It's done really well. It's set in kind of like, I don't know what, the 1800s or something. Am I maybe? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, it's back. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you could be right there. Yeah. I think so. So what's going on with Bridgerton? Yeah, I mean, <sighs> Bridgerton is a massive show. That that leapfrogged over Lupin and uh, The Witcher to be the sort of top-rated uh, uh, series on Netflix. 
uh, the star, reggae, Jean Page. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I just did because it sounds more, you know, romantic. <laughs> uh, but he is the main guy, the main guy in the show, uh, the Duke of uh, something. But he's the guy all the, gay, all, the, all the ladies are, you know, and some Swooning men as well are, 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 are falling for. But he's been now cast in Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, Dungeons and Dragons, a computer game or a cartoon or like a game basically yeah, uh, that's being game. made into a movie they're currently casting for that now came out a few years ago in 2000 i think it had uh sort of marlon waynes i think he was involved in it but this one's meant to be a good new version so yeah let's wait and see who else they they cast and let's see if they actually make it a good one this time i mean he's a good actor he's a good actor he's uh yeah he's the one that's hot on the scene so he's gonna bring over a lot of lady yeah yeah i think so yeah i mean from what i've heard i mean people love him and um it's probably only going to lead to you know better things so uh let's let's speak about this next piece of news now ryan johnson people will remember he directed the the second in the in the trilogy of you know the the, the latest kind of like ray um skywalker kind of trilogy type of thing and um that was the one where you know he kind of changed things around and for me it was okay it was decent there were some like, really good bits and there maybe a bit too long and he kind of like changed things up again and, and i think the way he left it was that anyone in the star wars universe could have you know, the force, they were able to kind of have the kind of midichlorians or whatever it is that you want to call it. Yeah. And um, they were able to kind of have that. But then when it came to J.J. Abraham's one, they kind of like, you know, retconned that whole thing out and they never really kind of pushed for it. But now the news is this. Sorry, I was rambling. R Rian Johnson <laughs> is actually still going to be working on this trilogy. And um, he was being uh, interviewed just very, very recently uh, by um, someone called Soraya Wilson. And this this author, so this, this uh, interviewer confirmed on Twitter, this is what she had to say. I'm just going to post this now because I can see that I'm going to get a lot of questions. Yes, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy is still on. No dates or timelines because he has other projects going on, but it is happening. So we're going to get more Star Wars, like we're going to get another trilogy. Holy shit. Another trilogy, Gordon Bennett. I know, I know. This is like crazy. So, I mean, obviously, again, just to reiterate, we don't know when it's coming, who's going to be in it, what it's going to be about, but imagine Ryan Johnson is going to do interesting stuff. Uh, we last saw him directing uh, Knives Out, which was this you know, great kind of like whodunit. Um, and if you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon Prime at the moment, so go check it out. But yeah, um, that's... Fans of Star Wars, it's going to be good news, right? Get in touch with us. Let us know what you think. Devado, next piece of news. Yeah, next one. So, uh, me, Mina Masood. Who is that? Who's Mina Masood? Well, he's the guy that starred in the Aladdin that came yeah. out, what, 2019? I think it yep. was Aladdin. Quite a decent movie. I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, you know uh, what? It kind of... I watched it just <laughs> recently. Oh, did you? Yeah. It, I, I actually, we enjoyed it. We, we sat down with the kids yeah, and everything. Right. We enjoyed it. We watched it. They, they enjoyed it. Yeah, it wasn't bad, was it? It wasn't bad. But yeah, it's... Uh, this guy, uh, Mina Masood, he is going to be, well, reportedly, he's supposed to be cast as Ezra Bridger. Ezra oh. Bridger is the, the main uh, star of the animated, uh, the animated uh, Star Wars Rebels. Uh, so, yeah, he, had, he got Star Wars Clone Wars, he got Star Wars uh, Rebels, and it all kind of fills in the gaps between, you know, the old Star Wars and the new Star Wars. So, yeah, he's a really good character. He's got, he's got a bit of the force in him. He's mm. like a like a like a bit of a Luke Skywalker type character, uh, but yeah, decent. So he actually really fits the the uh, what's it, the mold. Yeah, he kind of fits the mold. Yeah. He fits what you know the character should look like and be like. So yeah, I think it's a good casting call actually. Mm, that is interesting. So so we're getting obviously another Mandalorian. We're going to be getting uh, so Katana the show, and then this is just going to be an, an addition to those shows, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be an addition to those shows. So. I mean, Star Wars is looking like it's going to be, you know, yeah, here to stay, as you've just said. <laughs> And we know kind of people are interested in kind of Disney Plus now and the stuff that's coming out of Disney Plus, obviously because of Mandalorian's being well received and now WandaVision's being well received. So people are kind of like, oh yeah, man, this, you know, getting more subscribers. So yeah, we'll keep you posted on that one. Now this next piece of news is interesting. Um, people are calling Devouder down under Hollywood 2.0. And the reason why that is so what? many actors and production, uh, production houses, they are coming to Australia 
because over here it hasn't pandemic has affected things but not as much as it has say for example in the US so a lot of companies are thinking oh hang on a second why don't we just fly to Australia you know ship everyone over there and start working on these productions so Thor Love and Thunder that's been worked upon uh, we know that Mortal Kombat that was being uh, made in Australia but I guess that was that had already been done that was filmed before the pandemic but the news the, the rumor here is that Jennifer Lawrence is heading to Australia or she's here or she's coming here and the big news is what Deval just just remind everyone what this is yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. So for, for, reportedly, she's supposed to be in the new Fantastic Four. Ooh. I mean, that's big news. I mean, look at look at the way she looks, and you're just thinking straight away, Sue Storm, you know, yeah. the Invisible Woman. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I never would have seen it coming, but I mean, yeah, it could work. I mean, why not? I mean, she was she was an X Men. She kind of fell out of love of the character of Mystique. Uh, so, you know, she could be, yeah, she could do it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're saying Clint Eastwood's son, Scott Eastwood, Colin Farrell, they're going to be flying into uh, Australia very, very soon to make a film. Julia Roberts, she's going to be flying in to make a movie. And um, Zac Efron, he's been here for months uh, because he's doing stuff. So quite a few, you know, Hollywood actors, uh, they are kind of coming over here. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on over here and obviously we'll keep you posted. Now, talking about Marvel... We obviously have to give you some Marvel news. Um, so Charlie J UK. So listen out for this one. Uh, Doctor Strange 2. Now we know this is being made and we know there's some sort of connection with WandaVision somehow. The kind of rumors are, are kind of like you know, happening. But the big news here is that there are three ma- major characters three big Marvel characters that m- could be appearing in Doctor Strange Part 2. And it just kind of like seems like this is mad. I'm going to kind of just go through this. So the first thing, they are saying oh that Charles Xavier, Namor the Submariner, and Reed oh. Richards, all oh. three of these characters, these huge characters, right, could oh. be making an appearance in Doctor Strange 2. Now, Devout, you and I, we've spoken about this before, right? We've said that, okay, they, you know, a lot of these characters might be, uh, you know, appearing in this, but they might just have little cameos. But why have someone like Charles Xavier or Reed Richards or Namor, is it then to set up the X-Men? Is it then to set up kind of like another Black Panther villain or something? Like, what, what, what could this be? Oh, gosh, those are big names you've mentioned, you know. Obviously, <laughs> Namor we've Huge. not seen in any way, shape or form so far. But Professor X, I mean, oh, ah. I mean, yeah, you, you're right. In Doctor Strange 2, it's multiverse of madness. Just, you know, let that sink in. It's a multiverse of anything can happen. <laughs> so, yeah, they could be dipping in different characters to set up, you know, prolonged interactions in future movies and and uh, just, you know, letting us have a taste of, uh, you know, of Marvel, of MCU uh, phase, you know, four, five and onwards. But, yeah, those characters are big names, man. You, if you're going to drop them in, you know they're going to be they're going to play big roles in the future. Namor has already been kind of dropped in in uh, Avengers: Infinity War. We've seen a map of of his location somewhere uh, when it was uh, discussed in I think one of the Iron Man films. Right. I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's, I mean, just do it, man. Come on, <laughs> come on, uh, MCU. I know, man. Bring this all on. We we can't wait. Um, now. Interesting stuff happening out in DC. Uh, HBO Max, they're going to be releasing the Schneider Cut really soon. We know that The Flash is being worked upon somewhere. But the other news that's come out of uh, DCEU is that Supergirl has been cast. They've cast a new Supergirl, an an actress called Sasha... I I want to say Kali? Kali? Yeah. Uh, Sasha Kali. I haven't seen her in anything Deval, so, uh, you know, this newcomer, I think... But um, it looks like as if she's going to be the new Supergirl. Now, we know that Supergirl was already played by uh, an an actor called Melissa Benoist. She's on the Arrowverse. Uh, That has ended or is going to be ending like very, very soon. But uh, yeah, director Andy Muschietti confirmed the news on Instagram. So he announced it on his Instagram page. And we know that he's working on The Flash. So there's going to be some sort of... Uh, cameo for Supergirl as well in the Flash movie. Yeah, that's interesting stuff, you know, and it just goes to show that the Flash movie is going to be the DC's version of maybe Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because the the, the Flash movie is also going to be going into 
different multiverses and the, the you know the uh the uh what's it called again the flash uh uh flashpoint uh, what's it flash no no no, no you know i know not flashpoint but you know the the flashes uh sort of dimension where he goes through uh like oh, he can, you know go through yes. time and all that kind yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. uh i forgot what he calls it it'll come to me soon i'll just yeah. shout it out but yeah the flash has a, an ability to travel through like an alternate sort of uh sort of i don't know dimension when he's yeah. going through when he's going really fast and that can also en- enable him to go through time and multiverses and all kinds of madness so i'm not surprised that you know he's maybe traveling somewhere and he you know bumps into supergirl or you know another batman for example another version of batman that you know yeah. could be michael keaton or whoever you know so yeah i mean it's good casting she's quite young she's like 20 26 years old uh, she's done a, a bit of a bit of a tv work young and the restless and a few movies here and there but you know her cv is quite modest for now so she's a she's a young fresh uh hungry actress so I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll do a good job yeah talking of uh fresh someone who's not fresh in the game Sylvester Stallone now this guy he's had a rich uh successful career you know in in Hollywood obviously people know him from the Rockies and the Rambos and again that Rocky franchise is a franchise that keeps on giving and the news is that Sylvester Stallone, he's actually going to be making another Rocky movie. So, so we what? thought, that, yeah, exactly. So we thought the franchise had kind of like ended with him in Rocky Balboa, which is, um, you know, his basically swan song. And then they they kickstarted the franchise again with Creed, Ryan Coogler. You know, he was on board and um, he directed two, you know, great movies. You know, Creed one and Creed two. But now. They're saying that um, Stallone is going to be directing it, going to be writing it, and it's going to be a follow-up to Rocky Balboa. And I'm just like, well, what else can he do now? What is it like, who else can he fight? Is it going to be like Mr. T? He's going to fight Mr. T's son or something? I don't know. Like, what, what, what could <laughs> possibly be like going Mr. on now? Give the, <laughs> give the guy a break. Like, you know, it's crazy. But yeah, so Sylvester Sloan, I mean, he's like 76 years old now. And um, he's 76. But, but listen, don't. Yeah, but don't don't get me wrong. I mean, those movies, they are hugely popular. Like, seriously, the Rocky movies. Uh, I mean, one of them, the first Rocky was an Oscar winner. And, um, you know, they just kind of like went bigger and the stories went a bit outlandish and stuff. But Rocky IV was, you know, hugely popular. Um, I remember when that came out in 1986. Um, but yeah, man, another Rocky movie. Oof. Yeah, that's, that's mad. But I mean, yeah, go for it. I mean, you know, as long as he can... Uh... I don't know, as long as he can do it and, you know, he's maybe going to be the, like you say, going to be the trainer of someone else and, yeah, but it, it can work. I think, uh, you know, look at, look at Creed, that, that kind of worked, doesn't it? That, yeah. Not, not kind of worked, it did work. It actually. did work. It was a good film. Yeah, and remember, there is going to be a Creed 3 as well. So they're working on that as well. Exactly, directed by Michael B. Jordan. So, yeah. Exactly. All right, okay. Now, last in-out movie news this week. I just want to kind of uh, mention this one. J.J. Abrahams, he's this guy behind a lot of stuff. Just Google his name. And maybe one of your favorite movies is kind of produced or directed by him. He's actually going to be coming back to the uh, small screen for HBO Max. And he's going to be launching a new John Constantine show. And I I think I think maybe about three, four months ago, we kind of mentioned this. We said that Warner Brothers were hoping to kind of launch this kind of like dark universe and Constantine is part of that dark universe. And um, I don't think they're going to use the actor from the... Uh, the one who appeared in the, in the Constantine show that they had on on CW Deval, but yeah, man, Con- John Constantine, he's an interesting character. He sh- should be good. Yeah, he's quite a dark guy, isn't he? he mm. He's uh, he's dark and he's you know he swears a lot. He smokes. He I think in in, in uh, you know one iteration or a few, he's kind of dying or something, and he makes yeah. a deal to you know do some work for the the devil in, and and gain a bit of life or. It's just a mad character, but interesting. So yeah, interesting. Let's see how this one works out. Let's see how it works out. All right, okay. That that is your movie news for this week. Uh, but keep it locked to the Flixers because we've got loads of new movie news coming out. And obviously, we'll be dropping stuff here and there on our Instagram page. So follow us there and follow us on the Facebook page. All right, okay. Devout box set watch list. What you got for us? Yes, the box set watch list. Uh, first thing is uh, the Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel. <sighs> Uh, saw this on Netflix actually, and uh, whew, this is a mad documentary. Uh, I think it's four episodes. Yep. 
and it is a hotel in America, uh, Los Angeles, uh, just around the corner uh, from Skid Row, yeah. which is a region in Los Angeles where lots of homeless people uh, uh, live. Uh, when I say lots, I mean thousands of homeless people live. And this hotel is right there. And, you know, there's an a unfortunate uh, sort of Canadian lady uh, who, well, she's from Canada. She goes down to LA. She's 21. She wants to find herself, travel, all that kind of stuff. And she goes to the hotel and then she vanishes. Uh, she is gone. And uh, then there's an investigation. They find a video of her in a, in a lift. And it is a weird video. No one knows what's going on. It is, mm-hmm. this is a, <laughs> no. when you see some of the, some of the coincidences that occur, oh, man. It's, I'll tell you one coincidence that is still crazy for me. Uh, there's a, okay, which one, which one should I say? I don't want to spoil it too much because, which one there's, can I say? Because I I mean, th- there's a few that, they, that you think, nah, this has got to be some sort of, you know, supernatural something, or something yeah either supernatural or like she was always meant to vanish but uh yeah there's one thing that uh she goes to this this library and uh the library she goes to the library the day before she vanishes and then someone figured out that when you look at the library you search it get the address get the postcode of yeah. that of that library put it into google uh into into google or whatever but uh link it to Canada or something like that. Yeah. And the postcode takes you to a place that you think, oh my gosh, I don't want to say what it is because it's going to spoil it, but you yeah. need to watch it. When I saw that and a few other coincidences, I was like, nah, the, the whole coincidence is with dark water. Oh my gosh. Yes. Dark water coincidence. The hotel, uh, sort of her vanishing is linked, kind of links to a movie where another person vanishes and something happened to them. Don't want to spoil it, but and then the water in the hotel goes all dark, happens Aww. in this hotel. And a couple of clowns in the hotel are talking about how they drank the water and they bathed I in the know. water. They're donuts. How are you going to oh do that? Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. Stupid. It's crazy. But yeah, man, this, this, this documentary is, like Deval said, it's kind of like a four-parter. It goes through the history of this hotel. And man, one thing that surprised me was this, hit, this hotel got, had a history of like death. And it... Yeah. You know what, right? Also, Devaldo, oh my God, there was a connection to another documentary that we watched uh, about a month ago, which was uh, The Night Stalker, you know, Richard Ramirez. Yes. This guy apparently um, spent time at this hotel, the Seesaw Hotel, and it was this haven for kind of like the notorious serial killers, murderers, rapists, all that shit, man, went down. Uh, people used to live in this hotel and this documentary goes, you know, obviously in depth into all of that sort of stuff, you know, and like Devon mentioned about Skid Row. But yeah, man, it was, it was, I found the documentary gripping and kind of like, you know, where the hell is this documentary going? Like what happened to this young girl? She was Canadian. She just went out kind of traveling. And then you realize this kind of like other sad, you know, there's a sad history behind her as well. Oh my gosh, definitely watch it. It's definitely, you could binge watch it in a day easily. The episodes are around about yeah. 45, 50 minutes. So we definitely recommend that one. And the next one, Devaldo, is Amend, The Fight for America. Now this is a Will Smith, uh, let me double check. Is it, is he, does he produce it or does he just host it? Uh, I think uh, he's part of the production team, you know? Yeah, he might be. Yeah, th- again, this is a limited series. And um, and again, Will Smith, so he's narrating it. He's he's probably behind the um, the production of this. But this is a look at, uh, looking at the, um, the imp- interpretations of the 14th Amendment and the right for African-Americans... Uh, to achieve equality and this it, the cast in this is like huge they've got like loads of different actors who are narrating as well and they kind of give tip bits of information i've only seen the first uh two episodes but man it's really gripping it's really interesting and it kind of gives an alternative take on history and about black history as well and obviously we're in you know black history month as well in america so it's definitely worth watching they'll be the highlight uh, for you this week and new on tra- uh, streaming and trailers deval what we got yes yeah, so new on uh, oh my gosh this trailer we posted it on instagram <laughs> Uh, and it went crazy. People want this film. It's Mortal Kombat. Uh, this is going to be released on uh, HBO Max on the 16th of April. And uh, this is looking like a crazy film. 
It's going to be uh, like X rate, not X rated, sorry, R rated. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Or in the UK, it'd be at least a 15 or maybe an 18. Uh, so blood's going to be involved. And it's the computer game from back in the 90s. The first movie came out in 95. And this is looking like a crazy, enjoyable film. Sub-Zero in this film goes crazy, <laughs> creating daggers out of blood. And oh my gosh. it's looking like it could be, I don't think it's going to be the best film, but you know yeah. what? I can see it being fun, at least yes. being fun. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for with Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. And this next one, this is brilliant. I mean, when you see this, I hope I hope a lot of people go out and see this trailer and, uh, uh, you know, just go out and watch this. But this is called Namaste Wahala and it translates yep. as Hello, Hello Trouble. And this, yeah. <laughs> Deval, when, seriously, we, this is, I've never heard of a movie or seen anything like this, but this is a cross-cultural romantic comedy. It's a Nigerian yeah. cross-cultural yeah. romantic comedy film. So it's a, it's a kind of like a collaboration between Bollywood and Nollywood, which are yep. two of the biggest, like, you know, film industries, like one in Asia and one in Africa. And yep. this is the co combining of these two cultures, man. This is amazing. <laughs> this is crazy. Yes, I saw the trailer. It does look like trouble. Literally, the, the man <laughs> is uh, from India and uh, the lady is from Nigeria. Yeah, I think I've got the right way around. Yeah. And it's a cultural clash, obviously, like, you know, culturally, like traditional families of all backgrounds you know they usually want their kids to marry someone from the same tradition for example but you know see in 2021 and even before that see these things don't happen we meet someone from wherever you you know you fall for their soul and that's yeah. it done but in these families they look like they're very traditional and it looks <laughs> like they want you know each person to to find someone else they want to be with each other yeah and it just looks like they're I think in the end it's going to be a thing where they you know they accept different cultures and they learn and they yeah. you know it kind of flourishes so i think it's going to be like a rom com -y kind of situation <laughs> exactly but it looks like fun it looks we, like we, fun we're, gonna, we're, we're definitely going to watch this one and we're going to review it and uh, we'll yeah. let you decide what you think about it all right okay uh let's move on to anniversary corner devaldo what have you got for us because we've got some great movies and a lot of these movies they uh obviously have a theme running throughout them and they tie in with our main movie so yeah take it away Deval. yeah the first film that we're going to uh, look at is called the Black Power Mixtape, mm. 1967 to 1975. And this one's a direct uh, sort of a relation, a direct link to the main film we're going to talk about later, which is uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. And this one is a, yeah, it's, it's basically about uh, the Black Panther uh, movement and uh, the you know people that were involved between 1967 and 1975 and yeah i mean if you've seen uh judas and the black messiah even before that i'm pretty sure many people were aware of you know the uh, the, the black panthers and i don't mean the, the you know the marvel one obviously <laughs> i'm talking about the real <laughs> you know the real uh black panther movement uh yeah i mean there was lots involved lots involved people are some people just look at it as you know uh as some of the the outputs, but look at the inputs, some of the, you know, the, the school programs and the, yeah. the port systems that they used to put in place. But this is the documentary that really looks at, uh, yeah, things that happened during those times. A lot of people like uh, Angela Davis were uh, in, involved in this documentary, Stockley Carmichael, Barbie Seal, yeah. uh, all these people who, you know, are big hitters in, in this movement. So yeah, interesting one. Uh, definitely one to watch. Ten years ago now, but very, yeah. very, very, very uh, relevant for for the movie that just came out. Exactly. Yeah, go check that one out. Okay, what's the next up for us? Yeah, the next one up is called "Blame It on Fidel." This is an interesting one. Uh, that's, like I said, some of our, our anniversary corner films are going to be linked to sort of political kind of you know struggles and stuff like that. And this one's a, a, a delicate one. It's about a nine year old girl uh, who has to deal with big changes in her household uh, because her parents are involved in uh, or are radical political activists. Mm. And, uh, you know, she is a nine-year-old girl who's not really, obviously, you know, she's not, I guess, not political at that age, but it's looking at, looking at things from, I guess, her perspective of be, as being the, you know, the, the, I guess, you know, bearing the, 
the the brunt of it all, you know, having to maybe run around and, you know, watch, watch your back, you know, police on your case and sometimes your safety and all that kind of stuff. And just looking at how it could affect, uh, you know, someone so young. So interesting, interesting sort of uh, pros- uh, you know, perspective yeah. on this yeah. one. This one's actually, it's not an English film, it's not an American film. This one is uh, a French film because it's, uh, yeah, so the about the... the that the parents are uh, from a, like a radical political group or activists in Paris. So again, a bit of an international one here. So sometimes these are the best films to watch. This has got a 7.5 on IMDb. So yeah. definitely recommend it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, next one, Conspiracy from 20 years ago. Tell us about this. Yeah, Conspiracy. I mean, 20 years ago now. I mean, you kind of think of, oh my gosh, 20 years ago. Does that feel long to you? <sighs> Man, oh my god! Twenty years ago, I mean, twenty—that's two thousand and one. I remember two thousand and one. <sighs> Seriously, man. <laughs> but it's twenty years ago. A lot's happened in that time. And this one's a a uh, a movie about yeah, nineteen uh, early nineteen forties, nineteen forty-two for exact. A senior Nazi official uh, uh, they meet uh, to determine the manner in which a so-called final solution mm. to the Jewish question can be implemented. I mean, come on, look at it. Look at the way they even, like, you know, shape that question. I know. Final sh- solution, solution to the Jewish question. So, again, this is looking at, I mean, the political, uh, I mean, obviously that's like now will be definitely classed as, you know, uh, far right, terrorism, all that kind of stuff now. Yeah. Then that was the, the party, isn't it? That's what they did. And that's what many people believed. It was a struggle for, for many people. And, uh, you know, some people are still going through those sorts of struggles today. It hasn't disappeared. This, is a, this movie was made 20 years ago, but the sentiments still live on exactly. as they have lived on since, you know, however long ago. So this one has a, a good, good cast. Uh, Kenneth Branagh is in this one. Stanley Tucci is in this one as well. Yep. Uh, I think Colin Firth. Yeah, Colin, Colin Firth, Firth is in this I, as I well. believe is in this one as well. I, mean, I was reading uh, the blurb on this on Wikipedia and it says they used... Uh, an authentic script taken from the mm. only surviving transcript recording during the meeting. So they, they, they're using, um, you know, what was actually recorded, what was said yes. between these people, yes. you know, and it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. And this is like, you know, back in 1942. So yeah, man. So um, check that one out. Conspiracy again, a political movie, you know, about this discussion about what we're going to do with other races which, you know, which comes up, obviously, you know, in, in conversations and uh, definitely in our main movie, that, that's a question that came up. Uh, 25 years ago, 1996, this is Michael Collins. Uh, I remember this movie. Now, this is about uh, the life of Michael Collins. He was in, I, and did he start the IRA? I can't remember if he started it or he was a member of it. But um, yeah, man, so it's kind of like the, the, the struggles, the Irish people wanting their their freedom basically yeah that's and right. um and it's the story of michael collins how he came about how he formed his party you know the ira and um and then you know the legacy obviously of that yeah man and it stars liam neeson doesn't it yeah liam neeson yeah literally i mean he's uh is he, he's originally he's from northern ireland i believe isn't that's it? right yeah uh so yeah i mean this is uh definitely close to home for him uh directed by neil jordan mm. neil jordan who uh I'm pretty sure we've seen his name before in a few different uh, yeah, we have. movies. Byzantium, he directed that yes. with uh, Der Sharonin and uh, uh, the other, I can't remember her name now, but two great actors in that film. Gemma. Uh, it was Gemma Atterton, that's right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, really, really good film. But yeah, this one and also uh, Interview with a Vampire, also done that one as well. Yeah. So Neil Jordan's been around. But yeah, this one, definitely political, definitely uh, like, like you say, IRA. When some we say, we say that to some people, uh, you know, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, provoking. Yeah, you know, provocative. Maybe the Back word. In but England, yeah, this wow. one. This goes even before that. Actually, this is a this is a, a man who helped to negotiate the creation of the Irish Free State mm. and led the National Army during the Irish Civil War. Ooh. So it even goes yeah beyond. But obviously, those battles are still continued. Uh, to more uh, recent times. So yeah, good one. Julia Roberts is also in this one as well. 
Right. Okay, great. Yeah. Go check that one out, folks. And the last one from 30 years ago, this is uh, 1991. This is, is it Oliver? Yeah, Oliver Stone's JFK. A lot of people, I remember the controversy around this movie. He, Oliver Stone decided to go with, I can't remember the name of the report. This is a really famous report where it kind of goes through like, you know, what happened, who were the key players in the assassination of John F. Kennedy and Kevin Costner plays the the person who was uh, was tasked to investigate the whole thing and then he, eventually he kind of wrote the report and um you know there's obviously all these conspiracy theories that came out of it you know uh, lee harvey oswald you know he they say that he did it and then lee harvey oswald was then killed subsequently so by a guy called ruby i think it was jack ruby or something like that so there's all these things man it, you know what it's a gripping movie even now i can remember it i haven't seen it in you know a long time but i can still remember the feeling of when i watched it was like shit this is like this is a gripping movie this is a great political movie yeah it definitely is man and good good cast as well you know uh, kevin costner gary oldman yeah you know, two heavyweights in Hollywood. So, yeah, definitely good one. Vincent D'Onofrio is also in this one. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, so, folks, go there, check those movies out if you can. And if you do see them, you know what? Let us know what you thought. Or, you know, um, if you're planning to watch them, let us know if you need a, a kind of like a nudge on where you can kind of track them down. And um, I'm pretty sure we can help you out there. Okay. So, we've kind of mentioned this before. The movie that we're going to be speaking about is Judas and the Black Messiah. This is a new movie. This has been released in limited uh, kind of places. Was it? it, it it hasn't it hasn't shown itself in uh, in England, right? In cinemas over there, right? No, no, no. Still, we're still in lockdown here, so yeah. it won't be for a little while. Yeah, it's, it was it's released here in cinemas. You know, for the main, it's been released online uh, on HBO Max. So for people, uh, you know, who who have access to that uh, service, you can watch this movie right now. And um, first things first, produced by Ryan Coogler. Now we've already mentioned Ryan Coogler. We said like you know he was involved in um, Creed, but he was also involved in uh, directing Black Panther the Marvel movie of course yeah 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 he was involved in in that he's uh he's yeah he's good he's really young as well he's not even 35 yet I don't think <sighs> what a career so you can see kind of like you know the type of uh the projects that he wants to work on this kind of like you know these these movies which are kind of empowering which have got a deep message you know which are political and this movie is you can't get kind of like more political than this for me when i was watching this movie i thought to myself this is there's a message in this movie for the people of 2021 even though it's talking about incident like real life incidents uh, that happened in the 60s i mean anyone could watch this movie right now and be like right okay i can see exactly how this movie relates to my life like right now in 2021 wherever i wherever you're you know live in the world like, you know, there's things in this movie which you can pick apart and you can say, OK, this is relevant to me and this is what I can take from the movie. It's a story about uh, Fred Hampton. You know, he was the the chairman of the, the Black Panthers in Chicago, the Illinois branch. And at one point when I was doing the research in this, at one point he was just before you know the the major incident that happens at the end of this movie, just before that, they they would they were going to ask him to be you know, the, the head of the Black Panthers, Deval. Are you serious? Yes. This guy, Deval, was 21 years old. By the age of 21, the, the political career that he had, right, the the things that he, like you said, at the at the, at the the start of the show, this kind of like, you know, the, the free uh, food program for children, you know, um, you know, legal aid for people, for African-Americans, you know, his thing was the party should be for the people. And when you watch the movie, yeah. the Black Panthers, according to Fred Hampton, it was, listen, this revolution has to happen. It's going to happen and it's for the people. And, um, you know, I, I just, it was just super, super powerful. And um, I just thought, man, the acting in this was just blew me away. The interesting thing about this movie was normally with a movie like this, you would probably get the perspective of the, the, the white, american and in this movie mm. that doesn't happen and i'll go back to something like green book i'll go back to a movie like the help um where kind of you know the perspective was from from the white person but in this movie you're seeing yeah. it from these guys played by lakeith stanfield and uh, 
uh, Fred Hampton played by Daniel Kaluuya, yeah. who developed. I mean, what what can you say about that performance, man? Yeah, he's gangster. He's gangster. Daniel Kaluuya. I mean, they're both uh, done really, really well. Uh, both played the the roles exactly how they should and to the best of their abilities, and they made you either love or hate them, which is you know you know job done really. Uh, but yeah, Daniel Kaluuya was talking in, an, in an interview how, you know, some of these roles really take a lot out of him after, you know, he might do some of these roles. He needs to go away for like a week and detox, you know, and I'm, I'm sh- pretty sure it might be, it might be similar for Lakeith Stansfield, uh, you know, taking on a role that feels so much hate, you know, like a lot of people, uh, you know, ended up really hating this guy because of what he'd done. Uh, and, you know, for many people that have seen the film, I'm not going to spoil a lot of what happens, but you know, a lot goes down. And this guy, obviously, you know the premise already that he is an FBI informer. And there were others as well in the Black Panther Party. So, you know, the FBI had a lot of people uh, working for them, giving them money and stuff like that. J. Edgar Hoover, who was a director of the FBI at the time, he said that the Black Panther Party were the most dangerous, you know, political party or movement or group, more dangerous than in their eyes, you know, the KKK or... Or uh, I think they some they said also compared to Russia or something like yeah, that, you know, the, the communists basically. So uh, exactly, so they were really, really, you know, they were really going out to to really, you know, disband them because they saw that, you know, the, the thing with a movement, the more people that join, if people are really, you know, passionate about it, you know, it's really hard to to shake them. You know, the Black Panther Party were, you know, providing healthcare and food and education. I mean. You know, when people start to educate themselves and heal themselves and look after themselves, ooh, that means you don't need the, the government. government anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that makes them powerful. So, yeah, I can understand why, you know, the, the government were like, ooh, no, we can't have this. We can't have this. And then they obviously tried to, uh, to destroy them. Yeah, exactly. And there's kind of like um, instant, like when you read up on the whole thing, you know, with the Black Panthers and Fred Hampton and his story and everything. I mean, this guy, he was obviously targeted and um, he was really, really, you know, he was educated. He was a great speaker. He was charismatic and he was able. One thing that I loved about this, and I wish that they had kind of just focused on it probably a bit more. He was such a good speaker. He had so much charisma, so much kind of personality that he was able to join together different groups that were yeah. political groups that were around at that time. So the the lords, I think they were called, um, which was like a, 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 a um, Puerto Rican, uh, like a, get, yeah. basically like gangs. He was able to put together these gangs and say, listen, guys, look, we can achieve so much if we work together and we work for the people and we can just imagine what we can achieve. And I thought that was brilliant. And you're talking about a guy who was 21 years old. Yeah, I, I was shocked that that he even went to like the sort of the the white uh, yeah. groups as well, big groups that were otherwise, you know, a, a, against you know black people. So yeah. he was able to you know join pull them together. So yeah, exactly. That was, yeah, that was commendable. That that was amazing. So I mean, let's speak about the performances. I mean, like Keith Stanfield, we've obviously seen him before, like you know, uh, in Beale Street. Uh, was it Beale Street? Was he in that one? No. Uh, no, <clears throat> we saw him in, uh, uh, we've seen him in what, he's in Get Out with Daniel Kaluuya, but he, yes. he had a small part. We've seen him in Sorry to Bother You. That was uh, it. He's been in a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, he's good. He's good. He's good. And uh, obviously Daniel Kaluuya, he's, you know, he's British. And um, it kind of, when I was watching this movie and I was just like, you know what, the energy that he you know, puts into this is just incredible. And then, you know, remember last week when we had that conversation and the conversation came up about, you know, British people taking, um, you know, playing African-Americans. I defy anyone to kind of, you know, watch this movie and be like, how can you not be blown away? But regardless of wherever the person has come from, whether it's from Britain or whatever, like watch the performance and watch how the actor embodies that role and then where they come from shouldn't even matter. Exactly. Exactly right. Because when you watch this guy, the way he speaks and the mannerisms, his looks, the way that he looks at people, that thing that he does with his eyes. Oh my gosh, man. It's just like, you're just absolutely focused on him. You know, he's, he's brilliant. He's really good in this. There's already devoured. There's already talk of there being kind of like, there's like whisks of, uh, uh, whiffs of Oscar. Like, you know, they're saying that, um, you know, this movie is up there, you know, it, and there could be kind of like a, at least a nomination for him. 
but they're saying that, you know what, his performance is so good that, you know what, he could actually take the best acting um, gong. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know. I wouldn't be surprised. But at the same time, I wouldn't also be surprised if it doesn't even get <laughs> exactly. nominated. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, so listen, um, like Deval said, we're not going to obviously, you know, go in through the nuts and bolts. But listen, we want you to go out and watch this movie. It's, you know, it's a political movie. You know, it has ramifications, obviously. And, you know, you're you're getting a slice of history. And people in England, you know... Um, you know, non-black people, you might be thinking, well, listen, why am I going to invest in, in a movie like this? And is it really going to be interesting to me? The answer is definitely yes, because this type of a movie kind of goes, for me anyway, it kind of goes beyond that whole thing. Well, you know, you don't have to be, you know, African-American to understand the plight of, you know, you know, of, of what was going on at that time. Like, you know, you can see it, you can understand, you can see the kind of the racism, the obviously the the struggles that people were going through. And uh, for me, it's a powerful movie and it should definitely be seen. Now, would this, would this do, would this have done even better if it was kind of like had a massive cinema release to Val? I think it would have done good, you know, really good. Yeah. Especially uh, if they released it during like, you know, I don't know, Black History Month or something or, you know, which is in February, actually, in America. So, yeah, I think it would have done all right, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, as it is, it's, it's out on HBO Max. And if, if you can get it, watch it. Yeah, whatever you can do to go out and watch this movie is definitely, definitely worth a watch. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to quickly sneak in a hidden gem if possible. Do it. Uh, this one here, I'm not going to go into it too, too much. But what I will say is this is a really uh, good film. Uh, it's actually LGBTQ or LGBT plus. Uh, okay. Uh, month in uh, the UK so there's a lot of movies regarding LGBT LGBT uh, Q plus uh, community and uh, this this film actually is I guess uh, linked or related to that and this one's called Disobedience uh, interesting film I came across it sort of randomly uh, and uh, I thought I'd give it a watch uh, it stars Rachel Weiss and Rachel McAdams uh, so double Rachel and uh, Alessandro Nivolo, uh, mm -hmm. who we saw in like Jurassic Park 3, actually. Oh. <laughs> he was the one with the backpack. He wouldn't let go of the backpack. That and, was uh, it. He was almost... he, he trying to take the egg or something. Yeah, <laughs> you remember. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> he was trying to take oh, the my, egg. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, my gosh. You remember I Jurassic know. Park 3, yeah. yeah, 2001. Shit, that's uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> he was but, in yeah, Face so... Off as well, actually. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. He's been around for a while. He's got, he's got a young face. But yeah, this film is about uh, the Jewish Orthodox community. And it's about, uh, you know, a woman who is from that community uh, and she left that community uh, in a hurry uh, and, you know, against the wishes of her, her family and community, went to America to pursue a different career. And uh, over many, many years, you know, her community have gone on and done stuff. Her friends have got married, have kids, all that kind of stuff. Uh, something really bad happens. She has to come back to her community. This is based in London, in Golders Green. Right, okay. <laughs> so wow. Just down the road from me, yeah. but uh, based in London. And she comes back to the community and uh, because something bad happens, she has to attend a funeral and, you know, all these old wounds are reopened. And, uh, you know, people are you know, looking at her sort of like, oh, look, there she is, she's back again. They're even surprised she came back for this funeral. Right. Because she's been away for so long. She hasn't contacted anyone and she's just cut off her old family. So, yeah, uh, she comes back and, uh, you know, she's seen her family again. They're going to a few ceremonies and stuff like that. And within this, uh, you know, Rachel Vice, she's the one that's gone off and come back. She re she re uh, you know reconnects with Rachel McAdams, who's who's married to an old uh, friend of hers. Right. So you see them together, and you think, hmm, okay, I know what this film's about. Is it them two? And yes, so they in the past had an attraction. Oh right, okay. So Rachel Vice, uh, she's obviously uh, gay, uh, and she. Uh, is attracted to women, which in that in that you know Jewish Orthodox community is just a no huge taboo. So yeah. She goes off to America to explore her life. Her friend Rachel McAdams also likes women, but she you know she stays and she gets married. And obviously, deep down in her in her heart, 
it's a loveless marriage. Well, she might love her husband, but she doesn't, she's not attracted to him. And uh, yeah, she tries to, you know, against her urges and her, her true nature, she, you know, she just fights herself constantly. And now when Rachel McAdams comes back to town, you know, she's like, oh, gosh. So they start to sneak around and... Shit. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh. gosh. It is dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> it's mad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's actually, it's, it's, not, it's not just about sex. Don't get me wrong. It's about actual love, like from the, from the heart. Sure. And, you know, you, try, you, know be, you being able to be yourself in an environment that says you are supposed to be a certain way. Right. So, you know, this is a, a lens in which, you know, the LGBT community, uh, you know, have, have, to, have to, you know, have to, I guess, adapt in some cases. You have to adapt to one environment or you have to leave. You have to leave and you can't, you know, you have to leave. You can be your true self, but your family will not have anything to do with you. Yep. And it's a choice that some people, you know, struggle to, to come to terms with and struggle to live with. And I guess these are some of the... Uh, questions that you know people have to ask themselves these days not just the people going through them but also the family you know will you let your family member be their true self even if it is against what your community believes so yeah very very powerful powerful movie uh really well acted like i said it's not it's not about sex at all it's about you know relationships and and communities and you know being your true self and religion and faith and all of that you know all mixed up and all within the sort of confines of a society or a community that, you know, you know, everything has to be, has to look good. You can't, you know, and it's a small community. Everyone knows everyone's business. There's one thing that happens. Yeah. She goes out and something happens before she gets home. Her husband oh already knows. Gosh. <laughs> before she gets home, this n- news has traveled. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> everyone knows everyone. If you're seen in the street doing something, guaranteed, someone will know you're, yeah, it's mad, honestly. But it's an interesting film. I'm not going to say what happens at the end, but yeah, it's worth, it's worth watching. It's got a six out of six on IMDb. I think it's a bit, it's worth a bit more than that. But uh, yeah, decent film. Came out in 2017, so still quite, quite new. Fresh, yeah. Yeah, quite fresh. But yeah, Disobedience, that's a powerful, you know, you can watch it for yourself and think. Is, is that the right title? What is a disobedience? Who's being disobedient? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's worth a watch. It's intriguing. Worth yes, a watch. it's a great review, actually. And um, for obviously, you know, anyone who's interested, uh, this is directed by Sebastian uh, Lelio, who's a Chilean film director, actually. And he um, he won an Oscar for A Fantastic Woman, which is a movie that I have yes. seen. So if it's kind of, yeah, man, I kind of get the, you know, I'm getting this vibe, like, you know, that this director, he's... You know, he makes movies about obviously, uh, you know, strong female characters. So yeah, this is yeah. this this one looks like an interesting one as well. I'd love to put that on the watch list. Right, Deval, you know what? It's been great talking movies with you. That is it. That's how time is up. Time's up. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope that you can join us for another episode, which we'll bring to you next week. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm out. Yep, out, guys. Peace out, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast.